Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today, we're going to go over how to read raw data in SAS. We're specifically going to utilize the SAS On Demand for Academics interface. So the first thing that we want to talk about is the data lines. If you want to type raw data directly into your SAS program or into your SAS code, you're going to use this statement called data lines. So notice the syntax here on the PowerPoint. We have data lines followed by a semicolon, then the data that we want to type in. And after the last data line, we have another semicolon and then our run statement. Now, when you're typing in raw data into SAS, SAS does not know what your variable names are until you specify what the variable names are. So in that case, we use the input statement. So as you see, I have name followed by a dollar sign. The dollar sign denotes that name is a character variable. I have age, state. Once again, state is a character variable because it has a dollar sign after it and weight. And in this example, I just have two data lines of Marie and Adam. As you can tell, one, two, three, four. There's four pieces of information. So I have four variable names in my input statement, and I am saving this to a temporary SAS data set called demographics. So let's see how that looks in SAS On Demand for Academics. Let me just zoom in. So as you can see, this is what we have here that I just went over in the PowerPoint. So we are going to run this section. And then we get our output data. So we have the name, the age, the state, and the weight. So it's just as simple as typing in the data that you need. Now, this is only ideal if you are doing some type of data analyst, data science project, and you're trying to test a model on new data. It might be quicker for you to just go ahead and type in three or four observations to test your model on. But ideally, this is not something that I have used often in my professional career by just using the data line statement. Now, in conjunction with the data line statement, as you can tell in the previous slide, we just had dollar signs after our variable names. Now, we also can read in raw data that's arranged in columns. And you can use this when you have a raw data file that you want to import in SAS or if you are typing in raw data directly into your SAS program. And so you can tell that this input statement looks a little different. Before my code, notice my note, this is a counting game. <laughs> so make sure that your data lines start at the beginning of each line. So in the previous slide, notice how I indented my data lines and I started about four spaces from the beginning of the actual line, you wanna make sure when you're trying to read raw data arranged in columns that you start at the very beginning. You have no spaces, okay? And how this is gonna read is after each one of the variables, you tell them how many columns that variable name spans. So for instance, I have name and it's a character variable and I say that it spans between columns one through five. So if I look at Marie, I see that the M is one, the A is two, the R is three, the I is four, and the E is five. And that is the longest name that I have in my actual data lines. So I'm saying that the name is gonna span columns one through five. I say that the age is in columns six through eight. So as you see, since the E was five, six, because Adam's age starts right at column six, then we have seven, then we have eight. So the age is gonna span between columns six through eight. The state, which is also this character variable, now I'm saying that it's spanning columns nine through 11, and then wait 12 through 15. So let's see how that actually looks in SAS Studio. Let's just go to our code. And I have that as our next example here. So notice that I started at the beginning of the line, unlike up here in lines five and six, 
And then after each variable name, I have the number of columns that that name is spanning. So when I run this code, I look at my output data set and it looks good to go. I have the name, the age, the state, and the weight. So that is how you're able to read raw data arranged in columns. And this is beneficial if your columns don't start and end at the same spot. So for instance, the name Jen is shorter than the name Marie, okay? So from that, we can also read raw data from an existing data file, which is probably gonna be your most common way of reading in raw data. And as you've noticed, the difference between this code and the previous slide code is that in this code, I'm actually using a directory. Now, because I'm in SAS on demand for academics, I can get this directory straight from SAS on demand for academics. But if you're using the SAS software on your computer, this would be the file path towards wherever your um, raw data file is at. So if it's in your documents folder, if it's on your downloads, things of that nature, it's going to be your entire computer path. Now notice because I am using the in file statement, I do not have a data line statement. You do not use the in file statement in the data line statement together. Either you're typing in raw data or you're reading in a raw data file. You're not doing both in the same data step. So here I'm creating a data set called births from this in file statement. So I've uploaded a text file into my SAS on demand for academics. If you do not know how to upload files, I suggest looking at my first video, getting started with the on demand for academics interface. I take you through how to actually upload files into SAS on demand for academics. And then because this is a text file, it's not structured as a SAS data set, so it does not have columns, right? So here I'm also naming the columns that exist in this text file. So let's actually see that in SAS Studio. So as I've mentioned before, I hit this um, upload data. So I have my file selected and I have this upload data. And then I chose a text file directly from my computer. So this text file that I have is this births king county 2001.txt. If I want to get the path, I just right click and go to properties. And this is the path that goes into my in file statement. Like I said, if you need some review on how to import data into SAS, check out my first video on that. So I'm going to double click this text file. And as I see, this is just a running text file. It's pretty structured in columns. It doesn't have any weird symbols that I need to be worried about. And it has tons of variables in here. So notice that this file does not have the variable name. So because I'm missing the variable names, I need to have an input statement. So let's look at that example here. So right here in the middle, I have the same code that we just saw from the PowerPoint. So I'm calling the file path. Like I said, I just right clicked on my text file in the left. And now I'm inputting what I need to call each variable. And I'm only doing the first three variables, okay? So the first column looks like it's a gender. The second is just some running index. And then the third is the age. So I'm saying the gender is in columns one through two. The index was in that third column and age is in column five through six. And I'm having age and gender as character variables because there's a dollar sign that follows that. So now I'm just gonna highlight this and run. And I see that it creates a temporary SAS data set with my gender, that index and that age. Okay, so that is how I read raw data by using the in file statement if I have a dot text or dot dat file. Keep in mind, you do not use in file along with data lines in the same data step. Now we're almost done. 
Now that we have that, there's also another way that I can read in the columns, okay? So in this example, I'm using a plus one notation. And only thing that that notation means is that I'm skipping one column to go to the next column. And I can also call the at notation to tell SAS what column number I want to start at. So for instance, in the second example down here, we have the same gender index and age, and then we go to ethnicity, and then here we have the flag at at. So after index, I'm saying, hey, move over one column and start reading my age. So as I can see, the index was in column three. I'm saying, hey, plus one. So skip the this one and then move to this column here and read my age, okay? And then for my other, after my ethnicity, I say start reading my first flag at column 18. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's literally a counting game when you're having raw data in column format. You're trying to tell SAS where each variable should start and finish at. So in this example, the gender was in columns one through two. The index was one over from that. So it was in column three. Then the age was in columns five through six, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So one last thing that we need to focus on is re reading raw data that have informats. So what informats mean is that it's not formatted, okay? So when you think about traditional standardized data in SAS, it takes in numbers, decimal points, the scientific notation of E, things of that nature. It does not read hyphens, dollar signs, or any other currency symbols. It does not read semicolons. It does not read slashes. So anytime when you're trying to read in non-standard data, you have to utilize what we consider an informat. And there's tons and tons of informats. So in this example here, once again, I have no in file statement because I'm using data lines. And in this short example, I'm inputting someone's name in their date of birth. Because my date of birth has hyphens, I need an informat. And this informat means that it's gonna be month, month, day, day, year, year with a length of 10. Because if I count, zero, three is two, the hyphen is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I have 10 values in that date and I'm choosing to standardize that as month, month, day, day, year, year 10. So SAS knows how to read in that date. Now, it's very important that if you want this date to show up in your data set, you have to also use a format statement because format statement makes that date readable to us. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean so I'm just gonna comment out the format statement in this last data step. And as I mentioned, we have data lines with people's names and their date of birth. And I'm just going to run this. So when I run this, it actually has the numeric date of birth. So SAS starts counting at January 1st, 1960. That is actually an integer of one for SAS. So in order to make this date of birth column readable to us, we need to also add in this format statement that I just commented back in to say, hey, make date of birth readable to me as well. So please format that column so I actually can read it as a date with my naked eye. And now I see that the date of births are coming through for Oliver and Natalie. So once again, that is the overview of how to read raw data in SAS. Keep in mind that you can type raw data directly into SAS using the data line statement. In conjunction with the data line statement, you have to specify an input statement to create the names of your variables. You also can read raw data arranged in columns and tell SAS with columns to start and stop on for every particular variable. Keep in mind if you're using the column calls, 
You need to make sure on your data lines that you have no spaces. It starts at the beginning of the line. You also can read data using raw data files that you're importing into SAS. And if you need help importing data into SAS, check out my first video. But pretty much you have an in file statement with a directory of your .txt, your .dat file, et cetera. And once again, I am using the columns here to specify what columns each of my variables start and stop at. I also have a plus one in an at notation to tell SAS to just go to the next column for plus one. And then the at statement says what column number to start directly at for that variable. And then I also can use inframat. So anytime when I have hyphens, dollar signs, slashes, things of that nature in my data lines, I need to look up the specific inframat in order for SAS to be able to read in that non-standard data. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on SAS. Eventually, I'm going to start working on R and Python and some other programming languages. And thank you for watching and hanging out with Learning with Jelly. Bye-bye.